Hey everybody, my name is Hafri Shah, that's Matt, and we are from Paulsan.org. That's right, today we're in for a little bit of a treat because we will be reviewing the facelifted Mark 7.5 Golf R and Golf GTI. So, the GTI facelift is priced at 226,000 ringgit, whereas the Golf R is over 50,000 ringgit more expensive. So, which of the two is worth your hard earned money? Let's find out. First things first, the looks. The GTI is obviously the more flashy one of the two here with red highlights on the grill, in the headlights and the brake calipers. The lower grill gets a honeycomb finish whereas the R comes with horizontal slats. Golf R on the other hand wears a more subtle outfit with silver side mirror caps and all black brake calipers and alloy wheels. The only thing shouty about it are the quad exhaust pipes but unfortunately it doesn't come with a performance pack so no Akarpovich pipes here. On the outside, I think the Golf R is the ultimate sleeper car. I mean, just look at it. Mm. It looks like a normal car even though you know it's crazy fast. Yeah. But Matt, I think the best thing about it for me is that it doesn't look like a brother special, like you know, the <laughs> Civic Type R and the A45 AMG. Right, right. But come on, Fris. I mean, this Golf R, it looks exactly like the Golf 1.4 TSI R line anyway. So nothing special, right? Well, yeah, which is why if you want to buy the R, you get it in this blue colour because this is unique to the R. Okay, okay, I'll concede that. Now, both these cars, they share the same full LED headlights with LED DRLs that double as turn indicators. And the best thing is, the rear gets sequential LED turn indicators. On the inside, the Golf 7 hasn't aged all that well. I mean, I first drove this car way back in 2012, and even back then, it didn't have the most exciting dashboard design. But the good thing is, the big display here, as well as the active info display, do glitch things up a little bit, so it's not so bad. Yeah, I feel the same way too. And in terms of build quality, I think this guy is more solidly built than the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, for example. And the same applies even for the base 1.4 TSI Sportline. Between the two, the Golf GTI looks and feels more sporty thanks to the red highlights which is a colour that's normally associated with sportiness rather than the silver and blue you find in the Golf R. Both models share the exact same seats with the only differences being the R embroidery and colour highlights. There's no bucket seats like the Mark 6 Golf R and A45 AMG but this provides easier access and gives more leg room for the rear passengers. Here in the center, I especially like this new 9.2 inch Discover Pro head unit. And it also has the best Apple CarPlay integration and display I've seen yet. But the thing is, there's no physical volume knob. So on a car with no mute button such as this, I find it very, very annoying. It also has something called gesture controls, which I think is purely a gimmick. How useful is that? Hey bro, no physical volume knob you say? <laughs> okay, seriously though, this head unit is the 8-inch Discover Media unit and it's just as high-res and as snappy as the one you find in the Golf R. And the good thing about it is you can press car and it shows you a variety of stuff, especially this performance monitor that lets you geek out once in a while. But you know one thing that I really cannot stand about this car? This silly USB port. This is a rare ergonomic boo-boo by Volkswagen which makes it even more glaring. I mean, it's just so hard to access and almost impossible to take out. Another complaint is the lack of a sunroof which was fitted in the pre-facelift Golf R. But as for practicality, the Golf doesn't compromise. There's good legroom and headroom for rear passengers, perfect for a family of four. The boot space is also reasonably sized at 380 litres, so both can be used as a practical family car. In terms of safety, both these cars come with 7 airbags, ABS, EBD, you, you know, the whole works. 
Yeah, but that's to be expected. What they don't have is AEB or Autonomous Emergency Braking. For cars that are priced this high and they're this quick, you know, they should have AEB. Yeah, well, that's a little unfortunate, right? Yeah, so let's find out how it drives. As for the oily bits, again, things are by and large the same. Here in the GTI, it gets the same 2.0-litre, 4-cylinder turbocharged engine that makes 230 PS and 350 Nm of torque. That's just 10 PS more than before. The R also gets 10 PS more than before, now making 290 PS and 380 Nm of torque. But that is still 20 PS and 20 Newton meters less than what the European markets get. And um, before you start complaining, remember that even the Civic Type R is detuned for our market because of fuel reasons and whatnot. The better news is this new car gets the DQ3817 speed dual clutch transmission. This is much better than the older DQ250 six speed DSG from before. Now with 7 speeds, it offers a much wider, much better spread of ratios compared to the older 6 speeders and it's just better in every single way. The gear shifts are now so smooth that you actually hear them more than you can feel them and the changes themselves are so quick, so crisp that this is great, great news for driving enthusiasts. Well, it's a million times better than what you find in the A45, I can tell you that. The GTI gets the same old 6-speed dual-clutch DSG gearbox that drives the front wheels. Gear shifts are quick to say the least because, I mean, that's what we can expect out of Volkswagen. The thing is, it doesn't feel all that special anymore because unlike the DQ381 in the Golf R, this 6-speed DSG feels a bit more jerky on the downshifts. It creeps unnaturally when moving slowly in traffic and there's a fair bit of vibration at low speeds. The engine, on the other hand, is very well tuned. It's flexible in a sense that it's remarkably quick to rev, yet still have enough low-end grunt for the daily drive. In sport mode, everything sharpens up and that artificial engine noise becomes just a touch louder. On to the engine sound. It's much, much louder than the Golf GTI. It's all artificial, of course, piped in through the speakers and whatnot because, you know, it's sort of making up for the fact that it's a four-cylinder engine because the older Mark IV and Mark V Rs had beautiful-sounding V6 engines. It sounds fine, and in race mode, it sounds properly angry like this. But yeah, I think it can get fairly tiring after some time. The good news is, everything is customizable in the individual drive mode. My personal preference is to put drive in eco because I love the sailing mode, suspension in comfort because, you know, we are in Malaysia, and steering in normal, and exhaust in race. Well, for obvious reasons. Whereas the GTI gets a sport mode, the R gets race. As for the turn of speed, you know the R is significantly quicker than the Golf GTI. Say we're doing 40 here. Yep, and that's 100. From a standstill, it goes from 0 to 100 in just 5.1 seconds. That's, that's almost 1.5 seconds quicker than the GTI. For a 5-door family hatchback, that's ridiculous. And it has the steering to match too. This feels very, very natural, especially for an EPS. And it loads up nicely through the corners. I mean, short of a Ford Fiesta ST, this is one of the best out there. The Golf GTI shares the same quick rack as the Golf R, but here it feels a little bit more responsive. Maybe because the front feels a little bit lighter. Actually, it does feel a little bit lighter, so the steering is more responsive, and that makes corner entry a little bit more fun. This is front wheel drive only, so traction can be a little bit more limited than the Golf R. 
For handling, it's still one of the more balanced performance hatches out there and the fitment of XDS Plus simply helps combat understeer when the car is pushed to its limits. One thing is for sure, it's less hardcore than the Golf R and I think most people will be happy with the level of performance the GTI offers as a package. The R is predominantly front-wheel drive, but the forward motion system really comes in handy to resist understeer by sending torque to the rear wheels. The chassis setup is very naturally balanced and it's just unbelievable just how much speed you can bring through the corners. Overall, this car's handling is very, very neutral, very balanced. But if you're a bit too brave into the corners, the front can push a little bit wide. You can understeer a little bit. But all you have to do then is feed a little bit throttle and the torque gets pushed back to the rear wheels and the front will just tuck back in. It's almost like you're driving a mini Nissan GTR. That's just how clever it is. And through fast back roads, this is like a new age rally hero, like, you know, the old Mitsubishi Evos and Subaru SDIs. It's that quick. For suspension, both cars are really well sprung. The GTI is 15 millimeters lower than the standard Golf, and the R beats that by an additional five millimeters. Dynamic chassis control is now standard for the GTI, and it's also present on the Golf R. In comfort mode, ride quality is excellent and it's no harsher than a standard Golf. And in sport mode, you'd expect a really crashy ride, but it's not, it's still, it's still quite livable actually and that's quite a revelation. But the more surprising finding here is with the Golf R. And Matt's right, the ride quality is distinctly stiffer compared to the GTI. The springs especially are shorter and harder, but the electronic dampers from the DCC, they work wonders. There's such a wide range of adjustability. In comfort mode, I wouldn't go as far as to call it comfortable, but it's passable as an everyday family car. And in race mode, my God, it's stiff enough for your occasional track days. The best thing is, the R's ride height is just perfect, so you don't have to struggle with scraping the underside of your car whenever you're driving over big bumps. I've tried driving that thing around in Klang with a car full of five adults, five adults, and never once it scraped the underside of the car when driving over huge road humps. So, after all that said and done, Let's get down to the verdict. Obviously, there's a very big price difference between these two cars. The R is over 50,000 ringgit more than the GTI after all. But having driven both of them, I think the R is worth every single cent over the GTI. It's a very serious, capable performer, whereas the GTI is a more well-rounded proposition. That I agree. Serious drivers are definitely going to have a ball of a time driving this around, whereas, you know, honestly, I think 90% of the buyers are going to be better off in the GTI. Okay, so it's not as fast by today's hot hatch standards with the Civic Type R and A45 and all that, but it's still quick enough and fun enough for most people. And the R is just that little bit more hardcore in every single way. But having said that, I think it's still a better everyday car compared to the likes of the Civic Type R and especially the A45. Huh, you really think so, man? Shall we then put them side by side in one of our driven episodes? Yeah, why not? Would be fun, right guys? <laughs> yeah, let's look forward to that then. For now, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. This has been me and Half Race. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.